I have spent literally months designing this paper airplane. I have folded version after version, iteration after iteration. I've probably folded a hundred different designs of this plane and that's not even an exaggeration. I have put hours of work into this video and I hope that you all would kindly like and subscribe and share this video in honor of the amount of effort that I'm putting into this content. I'm trying to bring you the best paper airplane content on YouTube and it helps a lot to have an engaged audience. So with that out of the way, that small request, here is the F-35 Durandal. As you can see, this plane is just the quintessential jet. Not only does it have beautiful proportions, it has this very cool split in the wings, an awesome tail, it locks symmetrically in three dimensions, and it has thrusters. So this is easily the most detailed plane I have ever created, and as a result, it is quite complex. So if you're looking for an easy plane, this just isn't it. If you're a beginner, this isn't the plane for you. I'll leave a card in the top right corner to an easier plane, but if you are an experienced folder, this is one of my favorite paper airplanes that I've ever designed, and it is well worth the fold because not only does it look beautiful, it flies well too. So let's see it in action, and then I'll teach you how to fold it. All you'll need in order to fold this plane is a square sheet of paper. I like nine and a half by nine and a half. You could use six by six, eight by eight, anything in that range, 10 by 10 is gonna be great. Begin with your colored side up and we're going to start by folding the right edge to the left edge. Okay, and now I'm going to open the paper up and I want this crease here to be horizontal, the side that was originally down to be face up, and I'm going to fold this edge to that crease. And I'm not even creasing all the way across, I am just creasing a little more than halfway. So something like that, starting at one edge, a little more than halfway. Unfold that, rotate it 180 degrees, do the same thing now on this side. Start my crease at an edge, the same edge, and crease a little more than halfway. And I'm going to uh, now fold this edge here to my bottom crease and do the same thing where I'm not creasing all the way across, just like so. Rotate 180 degrees, fold this to the bottom crease. Don't crease all the way across. And now I'm going to gather this center crease between my thumb and forefinger and pull it to this crease here. And again, I'm not creasing all the way across, just creasing a little more than halfway. And I'll do the same thing now this direction. Okay, now I want you to imagine the distance between this crease closest to the center crease and the center crease as one unit. And I'm going to fold the top edge down a little more than a third of that distance. Maybe half, the, not quite half that distance, a little more than a third. So my line there's pretty, a little too high probably, but I'm just doing this. This is an aesthetic decision. This determines the distance of this top edge there. And now that I've done that, I'm looking at that intersection and I'm going to start a crease that's emanating from that point. So I need to find that crease on the other side of the paper. I'm just tacking that point. And then I want to land this corner on this crease, not the one closest to the center, the next one over. So your two points are right at that intersection and landing this corner on that crease. And I'm not creasing all the way through, I'm just creasing to the center, right to that point. And now I can fold in half along my center crease and book match this side to my first side, never even collapsing that pocket. I'm just folding this side to be identical. And again, I need to land this corner along that crease. Okay. 
and your paper should look like this. Now I'm looking, I've got three creases, one there, one there, one there on this top blue layer, and I'm looking for that middle crease of those three, and I'm folding right along it. My top edge here should land right along the bottom of those creases. And now I can open that up, open my paper up, and you'll see the intersection of these creases. We're going to make another crease now that emanates from that point. And I'm looking at the side that has this little short crease as a mountain crease. And I'm going to begin folding again, starting from that point, And let that layer escape. Okay, and now I am lining this up. Let me highlight, there's a little crease going from that point to the back edge. I'm looking for where that crease intersects this front edge, and I want to carry, swing that in so that it lines up with the innermost crease on this side. Okay. And now I'm going to point out, we had this little crease. This crease was kind of lined up with the center. I need a new crease that's a continuation of my center crease on this top layer. So I'm just pulling this section back across the center all the way into that pocket. Okay, and once I've done that, I can now release that layer and book match this side. And I'm actually not even going to completely crease this. I'm doing a really gentle crease. And then I'm going to reverse my center crease like so. And now book match my sides so that they are identical. Okay, so your papers should look like this. Now I'm going to flip it over just for my own convenience. I want to work on this section here with my right hand. And I'm going to highlight, we've got two creases here that intersect this little corner. I'm highlighting the top one because that's the one I want to reference. And basically I'm folding this point so that it lands on that crease and I'm folding it as far to the left as I can, which means it's going to make a crease that goes all the way up into that pocket there. So I'm just pulling it as far open as it'll go while landing this point on the line that I highlighted. Creasing all the way into the pocket. And if you have a tool like this or a pen, you can use that to help you make that crease go all the way up into the pocket. Okay, and now I'm going to unfold, and I'm sorry to say it, but we have a sink fold to do. So I'm going to open the paper up into this position, grab it by this edge, and I want to highlight, we've got these outer creases that are kind of, uh, I don't know, Star Trek shaped, and I need all of those outer creases to become mountain creases. And you're gonna kind of push down on this center section and you want to reverse this set of three creases that are in the middle. So I like to focus on the corner intersections as I do this. So I'm holding it right along this spine and reversing those sections right into the corner. Because once you get the corners, the rest becomes a lot easier. So once I do one corner, I'll focus on the other corner and then focus on this top corner. And you're not making any new creases, you're just changing the direction of those existing creases. There we go. And now you can see, I can kind of just collapse it in like that. And that is called a sink fold. I know that's a little complicated, but 
this is a complicated plane and I warned you. And now we can lie the plane in this position and I'm going to open the paper up like this along the center crease. I wanna make sure I'm not making any new crease along my fin as I do that. And now I'm going to fold this top edge to these corners here on the outside. Now I'm going to fold this top edge into the center, leaving just a little gap. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And we have another slightly tricky step, not as hard as the sink fold. We're going to open those up, flip the paper over, and I'm going to pull open one side. And you can see, I actually want to reverse this section of this crease, and I'm reaching behind to poke that point forward as I do so. And now I can collapse that back in, and you'll see as I pull this out, there will be a little extra bulge of paper as I flatten this that goes past that edge. Totally fine, that's what we want. And now I will open this up, poke that, I'm reversing that section of the crease. Close it back up there, and then when I flatten this back along the existing crease, I'll make a short new little crease right there. Okay, and your plane should look like this. I'm now going to, oh, while I've got it here, I'll flip my fin in the opposite direction as well, just to establish a crease that we'll be using later. And now I'll flip the paper over. And I'm going to be folding this edge in, but I'm folding it actually across the center. And I want you to look at this point right here where this crease, the one just left of the center, intersects with the bottom edge of this layer here. So when I pull this, I'm not creasing on this layer here. I'm creasing on this layer and on the layer inside that pocket. And basically, I'm going to start my crease right at the nose of the plane, and I'm swinging it so that this corner here points right at that reference that I mentioned. It doesn't actually ever reach that, but it points right to that point. And I'm creasing both on this edge right here and the continuation of that edge inside this pocket, which is right there. And then once I do that, I can fan this wing open kind of to whatever angle I want. And the way I'm going to determine that is basically I'm looking at this little edge that I made on my fin. And I want this short edge here to be about twice the size of that edge. This is just an aesthetic choice. So if yours is a little different, that is no big deal. Fold it right like that. And now I'm going to fold the plane in half along the center crease, like so and I'll fold this side to match with that edge there. My crease should start right at the nose. This corner should land right on that corner. And I'm creasing inside the pocket as well, right along this edge. Now I can fan this wing to match up with the other wing. Make my creases. And now we are ready to move the weight forward in the wings of our plane. So first, let me actually open this up right along its natural breaking point here. I've rotated the plane to be in this orientation. I'm opening it up right along its natural breaking point. I'll open it up on this layer again, and I'm going to fold this edge here to that edge. Close that up. And then I want to fold this edge here to that crease right there, and I'm leaving just a little gap as I do this. And then I can close that up, and I'm actually going to unfold this as I do so. So it should be just like that. Flip the paper over, 
open this up along that kind of natural breaking point I'll pull toward myself, open this up like so, and fold this edge to that edge right there. Close that up, fold this edge to that crease right there. Okay, and I can unfold that and close it back up like that. And now, with the paper in this orientation, the nose of my plane pointing toward me, I'm going to start a crease that begins right at this point. You've got this loose layer on top. So that's where my crease starts. And then I'll show you kind of how I'm just determining the angle here in just a second. Basically, I want this edge right here to run parallel to the edge of my wing. Anything really close is fine. And now that I've done that, I'm going to unfold and I actually want to reverse that crease and tuck it behind. Just like so. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Starting my crease right there and running this edge parallel to the leading edge of my wing. Just like that. And now I need to reverse that crease. Just like so. Now we've got an even trickier step where I'm going to fold this edge here to the leading edge of the wing. And you'll notice it's going to crease to about there and I'm going to have an open pocket that won't lie flat as I do this. So let me go ahead and start this crease. And then you can see I'm creasing all the way into this pocket. So this crease is a bisector between these two edges as I pull that, right like that. And this pocket doesn't lie flat. And the way I'm going to determine how I flatten it is I'm going to crease right from this point to right at that point there. So I'm pulling that, leaving enough slack here that I can work with this section of the paper. So I'm holding the outer section flat and then just pushing that flat from that point there to that point there. And then I've got this remaining bubble, which I can flatten. And once again, we need to reverse this so that these layers we've got here go inside the model so I'm going to unfold that. I need to reverse this crease and that crease there. So I'm gonna start with this longer one. And I can kind of pull, applying a little tension can help with this. And as I do that, I'm pushing that section in behind. I didn't make any new creases there. I just reversed those two creases and ended up with the layers all inside. So this is nice and aerodynamic. We'll flip it over and do those same steps on this side. So I'm pulling this edge here to the leading edge of the wing. Just like so, and I'm gonna crease all the way into the pocket, all the way into that pocket. And now I can crease from this point right here, the inside of the pocket to that corner right there. just like so. And now we can unfold that and we've got to reverse this crease there and that crease. So I start with the longer one. It can help to focus right on that corner as you do this and on the outside. And you kind of push the layers in as you do this. No new creases, you're just reversing the existing creases as you do that. And now that we've got both sides like this, we can just fold in again on that existing mountain crease there, flip it over, fold in on this existing mountain crease here. And we are ready to make the jet fold of this plane. I want you to find this point right here where this band intersects the center crease. That's going to be where 
your fold is going to start and it's going to travel just inside. You've got this corner back here, this corner that I'm kind of highlighting right there. You're going to land your crease just a little inside that, starting it right there. And I'm literally, I'm just working with one side as I do this. And you can see my crease is a little inside that corner. I want to make sure it's going to the right point up here. And I can just flatten it like that. And then I like to kind of pull that crease down and at the same time controlling these layers to make sure they roll in the way they're supposed to. I can match this wing up to the first one and this nose up here to the nose on the other side. Roll the layers, they're nice and thick, so you gotta roll them there to not make kinks in your creases. Match up the back edge. Just like so. So you can see our plane is really taking shape. So now we're going to fold the wings up right along this edge of the nose there. Just kind of pull it up at its natural breaking point. And do the same thing on this side. Just like so. And we really are getting close on this plane. You can see the general shape of the plane is definitely there at this point. And now we're going to reverse a section of this central crease and pull this tail fin up. And I think the, the point at which this section should reverse is about half the distance between that point and the tail. It's close to that anyway. And you, or maybe it's a little closer to the tail. And then you're lining up the tail and you want to basically get this line here that is uh, a crease to run parallel to this top edge of the cockpit and fuselage of the plane and then almost land on it but be just a little above it like I have here. And then we're going to crease these layers here. Okay, and now I'm going to lay the plane like this and open up this side all the way to here. And basically I need to reverse, or not reverse, I've got an existing crease right there and I'm just opening this up along that existing crease. And then I'm folding from the point where this crease intersects the back edge down. So my crease should go right to that point where that other crease is intersecting the back edge. And now I want to land this new edge I'm creating just inside the bottom edge of these blue layers. Just a little bit below that. Just like so. And I can close that side up and you'll see that's going to make, well, you probably can't see yet. So I won't explain what it's going to do just yet, but I'm going to release these layers and do the same thing on the other side. Open this up. I'm folding along that existing crease. I'm just opening up right along it, creasing all the way to the back edge and then beginning my crease right at that point on the back edge and landing this new edge just inside the edge of these blue layers like that. And now that I've done it on both sides, I will refold the first side just like so. All of those layers should be inside these blue layers. And now you can see we're going to reassert the top edge here because we've got some thicker layers there. Refold the wings up and level. And now all we have to do is kind of grab, if you have a pin, that's a good tool for this or something like this. And you're just kind of pushing on these little pockets with your thumb right on the spine and you're not doing a full squash fold, but you're kind of pushing to as though you're going to squash fold it. And that's how you open these up. And there you go. You can now just set your wing angle. You might find as it flies that you need just a little bit of up elevator. Uh, and if you do, you just bend them up here. And uh, you might also find that your plane's rolling. If so, you can do aileron adjustments, bending one wing up or down, but also the adjustments you make on this tail 
are going to significantly impact the roll of the plane. So if it's rolling, for instance, clockwise, making a left adjustment on the rudder of this tail will do a lot to reduce that clockwise roll and vice versa. If it's rolling counterclockwise, making a right rudder adjustment will go a long way too. That actually might even help you more than aileron adjustments adjust the roll of this plane. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching, for your hard effort in folding this plane, and good luck flying.